Hey peeps, we're doing an unboxing today of the Egyptian Art Nouveau Tarot published by Lo Scarabio. And the deck is by Julia Mathalia. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her name. It's a mass produced deck. Uh, why did I choose to purchase this deck? Because I did purchase this deck with my own funds. I love the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. I also work with the goddess Isis. Um, she is my patroness on my path uh, as a priestess and a witch. And so I thought that this would be a nice addition to have to my collection. I purchased it on Amazon. I, I don't know, I think it was like a little over $20, but we're going to do a little unboxing together today. The first thing I noticed is that the um, box is not embossed like I believe the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot was. I do like the warm tones that are depicted. I think those are very pretty. And I'm expecting typical Scarabio quality. I mean, I think we all know at this point, like when you buy a Scarabio deck, what you're going to get, right? Um, it's the, the cardstock quality is not 100%. The little white book is, is its own thing. Sometimes you'll have these little gems that will come out of the little white books. But typically, if you're new to tarot, I wouldn't recommend using the little white book that comes with a Scarabio deck as your touchstone. You do want to have something additional to help you understand the basic Rider Waite Smith structure within tarot as you get familiar with the cards themselves. So, um, let's see, what do I have to compare this to? So, Ludi Leskett, which is also a Scarabio deck, is right here. So, let me see. Very similar size to the Ludi Leskett. Um, and then it comes, obviously the cards come wrapped in plastic still. And I need to find my seam ripper that my wonderful, wonderful viewer gifted me some time ago for these unboxings. You're probably like, what the heck Racine? I tried to stop you from doing this to yourself and breaking a nail, but I'm just struggling to find things from this move. It's definitely been quite the journey. So let's see, hopefully I don't have to pause this video, but I will if I have to, let's see if we can do this together. Come on guys, work with me here. There we go. I want my nail tech to be upset at me for breaking my nails. There we go. All right. You know, the thing with the cardstock like this for more of a mass produced deck is as long as you take care of it and are aware of what you're doing, I, you know, I don't think that you're going to, you know, that the deck's going to disintegrate on you that rapidly. I think you just need to be aware of what you're doing. And I, and I, I will say this, you know, it is a spiritual tool, so you kind of don't want to be like treating it disrespectfully. Right. So I think if you, you know, I think a lot of the, the bitch about car stock that I hear with the more mass produced decks, it's like, well, if you're taking care of your deck though, and you're not too hard on it, it should be okay. It should last for a period of time. You know, my, um, Llewellyn Tarot of Vampires, which is still my original is still going relatively strong well over a decade later. So I only say that just, just as an aside of like, Yes, the cardstock is not going to be that spectacular. It is what it is. It's flimsy. The nice thing about these, though, is that they're not they're not a mat, but they're also not super slippery. They're not feeling super slippery. I will say, I a large part of why I purchased this deck is this backing. This backing is stunning, in my personal opinion. I love this backing. It's like what I associate when I think of color-wise with Ices, and also the scarabs are just absolutely stunning. So first things first is it's not like Golden Art Nouveau in that there's no embossing. It doesn't quite have the lushness of that one. I will say that right off the bat. It feels similar to me to the Mooka what was that one called guys? Ethereal Visions? Not in the color theme, but in the kind of whiteness of the borders with like how it creates a sense of space within the cards, but also at the same time makes the cards feel smaller to me. I don't know. I'm, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Right now I'm not as in love with this as I was with Golden Art Nouveau, 
it's definitely Rider Waite Smith True. So you can work with this new two tarot. Uh, again, the, my caveat to that being, please have like a Tarot 101 book or watch a series of videos or, you know, find someone who's teaching Tarot that you feel like you align with so that you can understand the original structure of Tarot and what we're working with here. Oh, I do like that Wheel of Fortune though. But this, this can, you can, this could be a first Tarot deck very easily for someone who's just acquainting themselves with the card meanings. Um, I do like the representations of the various Egyptian deity. And we'll check out the guidebook really quickly. Ooh. All right, I like the devil. The tower is meh. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, here's the moon. Um, I like that the sun has Ra there represented. And then we have the judgment card and the world here. Oh, Ace of Cups is lovely. And we have the two. Yeah, this is very like Rider Waite Smith. What you see is what you get. There's nothing that's like being rewritten as far as artwork depiction um i think you know i'll be really honest with you it's 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 nice and will be very easy to read with from a seasoned reader perspective um i don't really feel a sense of deep connection with it i'm not like super excited to get off camera and do some journaling and some research or you know i'm not really feeling that right now so um, but it is a great Rider Waite Smith, and I shouldn't say great, it is like a typical Rider Waite Smith deck. It's not, we're not rewriting anything here, you know, it, it is what it is. And the, I don't know, I don't know that I like the white borders, and I don't know why they're bothering me so much because they're very thin. I just don't like it. I don't think I like it. I don't like how it feels. So I associate. I see more with like the way that this backing is like these very lush jewel tones, rich color, um, saturation, um, a maturity, but also a passion, right? And I don't really get that feeling from this. I mean, it does feel very, I guess, arid. I can understand with the, the, the yellows and the kind of ochre tones with the blues but um yeah i mean it's just let's look at our nine of pentacles because you guys know nine of pentacles three of swords are always big decks for me a big deck <laughs> big cards in determining if i like a deck or not um i'm not in love with that it, it's i don't know Here's our Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, it's it's okay, guys. Like, here's the Five of Pentacles. It, there's nothing that you're not missing anything that I'm showing you or not showing you here. Like, this Knight of Wands is pretty. Oh, I do like the Queen of Wands here. She's lovely. I don't know. You know, it's hard too because it's like, oh no, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think about this Three of Swords? I guess it's not that bad. Also, I'm really partial to the Three of Swords just being the heart with the swords. Like total side note, it, I've, I am getting the Three of Swords tattooed on my body at some point in time. And I'm still trying to decide what depiction of the Three of Swords is most representative of what I want tattooed on my body. But uh, I love when it's just the heart with the swords because I think it's such a powerful symbol. It's something that like you don't have to have any understanding of occult symbolism or even symbolism in art. And you look at that image and you have an understanding of what that, car what that card means, right? Like you don't need to have a background in tarot or a background in art history to understand 
what the three of swords means um i do like the emotion that we see on the person's face here but i i love the stark contrast of the heart with the swords alone within the three of swords so um i don't know i don't know guys i'm not really feeling this one I'm gonna be honest i mean like ten of swords or so i would have i don't know i i don't know Queen of Swords is interesting. I mean, I guess she is more active in her depiction here. Okay. Well, there we have it, guys. Um, my end, my, my first thoughts, I really love the backing. I don't know how drawn or connected I feel to this deck. Oh, let, let's look at the little white book. I totally blew right through that because I'm just really not feeling it. Um... So they blend the Art Nouveau movement with the Egyptian gods and cultures. Um, okay, I do like that for the majors, the priest, the, excuse me, the gods and goddesses are listed as well as like a prayer to them. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then it looks like the miners have more of a divinatory little description. So the Little White Book is worth giving a read to. It's not a throwaway. And I do love that backing, but the, I'm not feeling super connected to the deck. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I don't even know if I'll do a full review of this one. Cause I'm just, I don't know how much or how often I'm going to pull this out of the collection other than if she really wants to come forward for a specific client. So we'll see, we'll see if I do a full review, but my first thoughts and opinions, this one isn't necessary. Um, unless you're really in love with the imagery I just showed here, I wouldn't jump on this one or I wouldn't stress about adding this to your collection. You know, kind of is what it is. What you see is what you get here. I don't think there's a lot of depth, at least at first glance. If I find that there's a lot of depth, you guys know that I will make a video addressing that and, and sharing kind of final thoughts as I've worked with the deck more. I hope that you're all doing well out there in the world. I am sending you guys so much love and many blessings. I'll see you in the next video.